Well, it took like eight years from book to film. Did you ever sort of uh, despair? Is it ever going to happen? Um, well, I did initially. Uh, uh, it was strange. I sold the, the film rights the day after I sold the book rights uh, with myself attached to write the screenplay. And so I wrote three drafts of the screenplay before the book was even published. Uh, so I didn't, uh, when I was working on uh, adapting it, I didn't have uh, the leverage of uh, it being a, a bestseller, much less an international bestseller. So um, back uh, in the early days, I was worried because it seemed to be getting moved further and further away from my book. And I, you know, always assumed it could never be a movie because of all the pop culture references and all the way that I wanted to mash up pop culture and celebrate all the different facets of it. Um, the one example that I always uh, used of what I hoped would happen is the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which uh, had different uh, characters from different IPs all mashed up together, and uh, Steven Spielberg is the one who made that happen. Uh, and so um, I think that if the, the uh, film adaptation had found its way to any other filmmaker, uh, it would have not ended up resembling my novel very much at all. I think it somehow found its way to the one person uh, who could have made a faithful adaptation. How, how involved were you in, 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 I mean, you wrote the screenplay, and uh, I mean, I'm thinking of stuff like The Shining stuff, that was yeah. not in the book. Yes. So, uh, so how well, did you come up with that? Well, it was wonderful. Uh, uh, it, what happened to me should happen to every novelist who gets their um, film ad or their book adapted. Um, uh, the other screenwriter, uh, uh, Zach Penn, was a friend of mine before he even started working on uh, the film, and so um, when he started uh, doing his rewrite, uh, he was wonderful and, and kind of consulted me on all the changes that he was going to make and we would bounce ideas back and forth. And then when Steven came on board, uh, he read my novel and was a huge fan of it and um, uh, came into his first meeting with uh, all these post-it notes of things from the book that he wanted to put back into the movie, um, little details. But also we knew, you know, uh, he wanted to make a faithful adaptation, uh, but he also wanted to make things more cinematic. And that was how, you know, even before Stephen came aboard, uh, we had hit upon the idea of a race. Instead of, you know, having someone in the novel, uh, they would stand at a Pac-Man machine for six hours and play a perfect game of Pac-Man, which works in a novel, uh, but would not work in a film, would stop the film dead. So we needed something, a video game uh, related challenge that would capture the spirit of the challenges in the book, but be more cinematic. Uh, and so that's how we hit upon the, the race and the, the Shining Challenge um, uh, came from, um, uh, first we tried to get Blade Runner, because uh, Blade Runner was uh, one of the uh, uh, movies featured in the novel, uh, but that, that didn't work out. And then we talked about um, War Games, which was another film in the book, but didn't seem quite as uh, cinematic. Uh, and so we made a list of other 80s films uh, that we thought might be a good fit. And when Steven saw The Shining, uh, he immediately <laughs> responded. Uh, and that ended up being uh, one of my favorite changes from the book because it was that was when I got to see, you know, uh, one of my heroes geek out about one of his heroes. Uh, up to that point, it kind of just uh, been me and Zach and other people, uh, you know, um, uh, celebrating people that we love. And that was when I got to see uh, Steven and Janusz uh, Kaminski both celebrate someone they really admired and had known and paid tribute to their work and that, you know, that, made, that was so much fun. What was the most mind-blowing scene for you to see when you saw the film? Oh my gosh, The Shining. Uh, I couldn't, you know, once I saw that uh, realized uh, and once the you go into The Shining and the film grain changes and the music uh, and just, uh, I don't know, I just, I'm so blown away that there's there are actual shots from The Shining in our movie. Uh, and if you know any of that, you know, if you went back and told me about any of this when I was 13 years old, I just, my, I would have dropped dead. My head would have exploded. I, uh, I'm, uh, uh, but there's so much, you know, I love the whole film, but that's, that's one of the things that I love. Are you ever scared that a young audience today might not know all, all the references to the 80s? Uh, well, you know, I never, once I saw the film, I didn't worry about that anymore. Uh, it's like Steven told our first audience at South by Southwest, he said the, all the pop culture references are kind of uh, window dressing in the side view mirrors, but if you look straight ahead, you can always follow the story. And, um, and people have told me the same thing uh, about my novel. You know, the novel uh, has gotten picked at a lot of universities in America as a common read and so I've gone and spoken at colleges where it's all 18 year old kids who weren't even alive in the 80s and for them the story works as just a fun 
uh, kind of uh, futuristic scavenger hunt adventure that also deals with having an online identity versus a real world identity, which is something that uh, young people today already uh, deal with. So for them, the mythology or the pop culture elements work like the mythology in an Indiana Jones movie. You know, you don't need to know the details or even how much of it is real, but you understand enough to, to follow the adventure.